Last time we were playing um, a game on a terminal and uh, you sort of teased a little bit about what was to come next. So where do we go with this? Yeah, we were playing the game of Rogue, which uh, was one of these early terminal based games, but had this terminal addressing so it could jump around the screen and draw you a nice map and so on. And I'd sometimes thought perhaps we could, uh, I don't know, code up something to play it ourselves, but no, it, it looks really, really complicated. Firstly, you've got to interpret all this screen stuff and make your own map. And then it's a fairly random game. So you've got to take decisions at every point and thought, yeah, well, anyway, I've got some other work I should be doing anyway. Uh, but then across the uh, internet, as it was, some people at Carnegie Mellon University had taken on the challenge. Uh, in fact, four of them, Michael Maldin, Guy Jacobson, Andrew Apple and Leonard Hammy. They'd actually uh, investigated this. They'd, they'd got a system that could interpret all these codes coming to you instead of going to the screen they sort of intercepted them and understood them and made made their own map of the dungeon and then they had a quite sophisticated exploration program so there's a lot of pathfinding to work out how to get from a to b and uh, what to do when you met a monster and it got more and more sophisticated and the version i eventually got hold of had um, a genetic learning component, which uh, I think you've done a video on it. So this is quite a reasonable thing to do because nobody actually knew how to play the game perfectly. There are so many decisions and things. You know, do, do you do you keep running away from the monster and hope that uh, you'll recover and fight another day, or do you just go in there and hack them to bits and uh, hope hope that you survive? And so they had genes for each of these things. You know, how how aggressive should I be towards a monster? How much time should I spend exploring this level? And uh, when should I stop and just go down to the next level because the rewards are better down there, but the monsters are bigger. So if you played it enough times, it would decide which of these were the best opportunities. And they started off, I think, with about eight or nine of these genes that looked at different things. I expanded it considerably. I think I had 250 uh, in the version I've got. Uh, some of them don't do anything, but uh, it's always good to have some spare ones around. So uh, that, that was quite uh, yeah, an impressive game. And it, it did actually do very well. They, they did actually win the game uh, at least once. There was a bit of a uh, war between the implementers of that and the game Rogue itself. So as new versions of Rogue came out, they would subtly tweak things so that um, the, this program would no longer work. The text that came you know, said you, you hit that monster really well or something they changed that to you scored a great hit and then so they, the program was hard-coded to do certain things when it got a certain message and then if you tweak the message the program stops working yes exactly that yeah and in one case they went for capitalization so uh, you, you had capitalization at the beginning of the phrase and they changed the words they changed the monsters so uh, it got more and more sophisticated so that it could actually um uh, play against several versions of this. That was in sort of the late 80s, I, I think I got hold of the first version. I just kept tinkering with it. It, it was sort of my go-to project when I was bored with whatever else I was doing. I'd go and tinker with that. As systems evolved, it stopped working. Computer operating systems had changed. So I had to port it to the new versions. And uh, the way it interacted with the game changed somewhat. So I had to do that. And then I went on to this genetic learning. And my latest version, which I started uh, I guess the beginning of this year, so somewhere in the middle of lockdown anyway, uh, was to rewrite it all in C++. The original was written in C. So I thought uh, there's a new C++ version come out. C++ 17 has a few, few features. So I thought it'd be nice to try exploring that with um, a proper project. I also embedded another language called Lua. I don't know if you've done anything on Lua. No, no. It's a kind of language that's supposed to be embedded in other programs. So if you want to tweak how your program runs, uh, Lua is very easy to embed in another language, uh, another program, and it allows you to sort of configure it. And it has you know, arithmetic and string matching and all that sort of stuff. So you, you just make calls into your program uh, and call out to this program. And then you could have a whole script that does things. It's very popular in games. So you, you could sort of uh, have the the uh, heavy lifting of the game done in C++, and then you can have these scripts that uh, control how things move, spaceships move, or monsters move, or, or whatever. You can just, uh, and it's, of course, it's very quick to then 
coded up because it's all interpreted. So I put that in so that uh, I, I could adapt to new versions because there's, uh, there's originally only about three or four versions, but since that time, newer systems have ported it, people have reinvented it. Uh, there was Rogue, there was Super Rogue, there was Ultra Rogue, there was NetHack, and uh, NetHack was beyond uh, the Rogue-O-Matic system, which is what this system was called. That was far too uh, complicated. Did quite a lot of work on this. I've still never won the game, even with the help of uh, Rogomatic. Uh, it's got further than I ever did, but uh, it has a recording system built into it where it, you can either start recording at the beginning or you can record it at any time, or it automatically starts recording if you go below level 18. It says, oh, right, this, this is a good game. I better save this. Is it a bit like watching something on fast forward? If you run it at full speed, then um, you, you can actually hardly see it. Get, get a longer game. Another where you can run it is uh, terse mode, in which case it just prints out what it's doing each time. That's that's what I used to run it in because it was a, uh, a bit of a CPU hog. It isn't these days. <laughs> We've got, got much bigger programs these days. But when, when you were time sharing with lots of other people, then uh, you had to uh, keep it running slowly. Are there any stupid mistakes it makes or, or what we would call ridiculous mistakes? There are some mistakes it certainly makes. Uh, so... And particularly on the newer versions where I haven't quite uh, got all the subtleties coded up. So that there's one case where it, it goes into a room, sees a monster and says, oh, right, OK, I, I better get into the monster fight or flight mode. You know, do I go and attack it or not? Decides to uh, not attack it because it's looked at the statistics and decided it's perhaps not a good idea. So it backs out of the room. But in this version, when you back out of the room, the room goes dark and everything is hidden. And it then reevaluates and says, oh, I was going into a room there and there's, there's no reason I shouldn't go into it. So it goes back into it. And the monster reappears. It's, oh, no. Backs out again. So it just shuffles backwards and forwards. There's several cases where it gets stuck into those sorts of loops. And they're usually cured by another monster wandering up and making you reevaluate your decision. So suddenly you've got to take an action and that that's sort of, uh, pushes you into uh, things. There is a bug in the curses version that the very early one uses that draws walls wrong occasionally and that that really confuses it in rogomatic settles on a set of genes eventually but it takes a few thousand runs to actually really refine it down to something and then as you add more genes it's it's more complexity so it takes takes even longer to settle down then how long does a few thousand um, runs take now probably a few hours i, I would guess to to get through that sort of thing it's the sort of thing as long as uh, I, I work really hard to try and make sure it never froze so that it, it either completed the game or just quit or, or just gave up so that you could have a script that would continue to run it so that you could leave it running go to bed and wake up in the morning and there'll be a few thousand runs done by that time uh, what used to happen is you'd, you'd leave it going and the, the second one it would get hung up somewhere and just sort of lock lock up into the system and not give you any useful data. The guys who uh, wrote the Rogomatic, uh, the, uh, these people at CNU, um, they actually got sponsored or got sponsored partly by the DOD under the ARPA project. So they, they got some, I don't know quite uh, how they managed to wrangle that. Uh, we want to write a, a program to play a game. Uh, that's just the sort of things the defence uh, systems would like, is it? Well, we've all watched war games, so who knows? Uh, yes, yes, you, yes. Do you want to play a game? Yes. It's probably better than global thermonuclear war, certainly. I don't uh, profess to be an expert in game theory at all, but obviously the, the, the ideas behind coming up with challenges and solving those challenges has got to be interesting to anyone who's in kind of war games, I suppose. Yeah, especially, I, I guess, this one, because the logic is not fixed. You have to adapt to it and uh, be a, a, you know, this uh, learning learning uh, idea with the, with the genetic stuff that's always a it was very early days it was the first time i'd ever heard of genetic algorithms and uh, I said, wow what are these and uh, so I, I spent a while playing with them but uh, i've never used them seriously apart from in rogomatic which you can get back to your computer and now you've got a message from this first hop go again set the time to live to two it decrements to one Decrements again, motors, and now you're going sitting to get here a little bit longer. Inspired. Then we've got 60 possible here, positions. One, we've got a two, three out of five, and then they can all go in any. Three.